Hey gang, today we're going to solve a 2D heat equation under Dirk Clay condition. We're going to begin with our standard 2D heat equation, uh, u sub t equals c squared times uxx plus uyy, with x bounded between 0 and a, and y bounded between 0 and b. Next, when you apply your Dirk Clay condition, you know that the edges of your two-dimensional shape are all going to be 0. Also, we know that the temperature within our two-dimensional shape is a function of x and y. With this, we are going to separate our heat equation into three functions. A function of x multiplied by a function of y multiplied by a function of t. We're going to rewrite our standard heat equation in terms of the three functions, and then divide through by x, y, t so that we can isolate our functions of x. This allows us to set our x functions equal to a constant. In this case, we're going to use the planetary symbol for Neptune. Now, we can say that x double prime plus Neptune x equals zero. This is our first second order differential equation. What we're left with are functions of y and t equal to a constant. This allows us to rearrange what we have and isolate the y functions and set them equal to a new constant, which in this case is going to be the planetary symbol for Jupiter. So we can now say that y double prime plus Jupiter y equals zero. Our last differential equation solves for the t functions, where t prime plus c squared times a constant times t equals zero where we knew algebraically that this constant, the planetary symbol for Saturn, must equal Jupiter plus Neptune. Knowing the differential equations for each of our three functions, we can now revisit our initial Dirichlet conditions. Now, we can write out our Dirichlet conditions in terms of the three functions, x, y, and t. This gives us boundary conditions for each of our three differential equations that we just established. We're going to start by looking at our differential equation for x, which is x double prime plus Neptune x equals zero. Using the characteristic polynomial, we know that r squared equals negative Neptune, and therefore r equals plus or minus the square root of negative Neptune. Next, we're going to solve this differential equation for three different cases of the constant Neptune. First, Neptune equals zero. Second, Neptune is less than zero. And third, Neptune is greater than zero. This fast-forwarded section finds solutions for a function of x using each of the conditions for Neptune with the boundary conditions that we found earlier. We're trying to find a valid non-trivial function for x. What we see here is that for both Neptune equals zero and Neptune is less than zero, we're left with trivial solutions for x. In the case where Neptune is greater than zero, we determine that the function x equals c2 times sine of the square root of Neptune times a. With our boundary conditions, we know that this equals zero. This can only be true if the square root of Neptune is equal to n pi over l, which leaves us with Neptune equal to n pi over l squared. Now, we're going to repeat this process for our functions of y. We know that y double prime plus Jupiter y equals zero. And with our characteristic polynomial, we know that r equals plus or minus the square root of Jupiter. Now, remember that x looked fairly similar to this because we determined that r equals plus or minus the square root of Neptune. So, we're going to use this similarity and say that our function of y is equal to a constant times the sine of the square root of Jupiter times y, which can only be true if Jupiter is equal to m pi over l squared. And keep in mind, that this m here is different from the n that we used in our x function. 
Finally, we're going to solve our differential equation for our functions of t. We know that t prime plus e squared times Saturn times t equals zero. Using our characteristic polynomial, we find that r equals negative c squared Saturn. Therefore, our function of t is equal to a constant times e to the negative c squared times Saturn times t. Now, remember that Saturn is equal to Jupiter plus Neptune. So, substituting this in for Saturn, we find that our function of t is equal to a constant times e to the negative c squared times n pi over a squared plus m pi over b squared, all times t. Now, we're going to return to our original heat equation, which we know is a function of x multiplied by our function of y multiplied by our function of t. Since our functions for x and y are sine series functions with an infinite order of n and m, we must take a summation for n and m between 1 and infinity of both of our sine series functions multiplied by our function for t. However, this still leaves us with an unknown constant. To find this constant, we're going to set t equal to zero which comes from our Dirichlet conditions, where u of x comma y comma zero is equal to a function f of x and y. This sets our exponential function equal to one, leaving us with only our two sine series functions. Now, to find our constant, we're gonna multiply our function f of x and y by our two sine series functions and integrate over the bounds of our two-dimensional shape, a and b. Now, plugging all this in for our constant, we're left with our final two-dimensional heat equation with Dirichlet conditions. Thank you all for watching.